Hello there and welcome back to the channel. Now today I want to talk about the DJI Digital FPV system and specifically spectator mode. Now there has been a lot of questions and speculation out there around if the spectator mode on the O3 system is any better than the spectator mode we had on the original DJI FPV system. Now obviously there are many factors in this that need to be taken into account in the sense of what sets of goggles are using, what ear units, but the real base question is, has DJI improved the performance? And what I'm going to do today is to try and answer that. Now, just to be clear, what we're going to do first of all is explain what spectator mode is and why it is different compared to say standard live viewing. Then we're going to take it for a flight in the original FPV mode with a set of V1 and V2 goggles. Then we're going to fly with O3 with the goggles 2 and the V2s. We're going to do some tests to see if there's any communication between the goggles. And then at the end, I will share with you my thoughts having tested this. Now, just to be clear, if you have found this video interesting or if you do find it interesting, please do make sure you give it a like as it's going through. And also, if you'd like to support us, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon in the description. I will talk a bit more about that at the end. Anyway, that's it. Let's get on with it and let's find out what spectator mode is first of all. So spectator mode, this is an option in the DJI FPV system that allows another set of goggles to ride along. In the old analog FPV day, spectator mode was just basically having another set of goggles and tuning in to the same frequency or putting it on the same channel as the person flying. However, with digital FPV, things are a bit more complicated. First of all, we have proprietary links and secondary, the system would need the ability to be able to share that link. For instance, the DJI system is a two-way link. It isn't just a video transmission from the ear unit back to the goggles. The goggles actually transmit back and the DJI system and the avatar system, for instance, actually use packet acknowledgement as well as packet recovery to improve the system's performance. It's actually a two-way link and it's constantly communicating. The ear unit is sending a packet of data. The goggles are saying, yes, I've received that or no I haven't and the ear unit sends it again and this is why you see the latency shift on the DJI system because if it hasn't received a packet of data it can request that piece of data again and then build up the image. Obviously there is a point that if the data is lost and it's moved on then it has to ignore that and that is then when you get the breakup in the system. As a result though of this two-way link it brings a complication for the spectator mode because that two-way link is between the master goggle and the ear unit. It is not though between the spectator goggle and the ear unit and as a result the spectator goggle actually acts as receive only and as a result of that you don't get the same quality image in the spectator as you would in the original goggle. That is because the spectator is not able to communicate with the ear unit to say yes or no I have received that packet and can you send it again. It is simply relying on the data that it is seeing being transmitted. Now, this has shown on the original FPV system to have some rather sporadic and quite poor behaviour. Spectator mode does not perform remotely as well as it does on, say, analog or on the HD0 system that is also able to simply receive the signal. The real question, though, has been with spectator mode is that if DJI have improved it on the O3 system. There's also been speculation out there that the goggles communicate as well to improve the performance and we're going to try and test that today as well. So the first thing we need to do is hop out to the field and actually try it on both of these systems. So I headed out to the field with three sets of goggles, a V1, a V2 and the goggles too and the plan was then to use both a DJI V1 system aircraft which was fitted with an air unit and then an O3 based aircraft which I decided to use the Defender 25. They don't need to be identical, there's no reason for that to be the case. It was simply picking up two aircraft of two different systems and then what we're going to do first of all is test the V1 system and then we're going to move over to O3. 
Okay, so the first bit of footage I want to show you is the V1 system. So this is a DJI ear unit. The V1 goggles are the masters. That's what you're seeing in the bottom right-hand corner. And the V2s are set to the spectator goggle. This is what I am wearing as I am flying. As I've said, I decided to go down the road of flying with the spectator goggle to see how that performed and give that the opportunity to show me the best and worst of it. Now you can see here on the field as I fly around I'm really not very far from myself at all and it starts to break up very quickly. It isn't the same breakup that you get from the DJI system when the image starts to go low signal. Instead it's these large blocks of area that you get the color change. It starts going dark, black areas appear and go but what is very visible is it happens quickly and it happens as soon as you take off in fact it starts to do it whilst on the ground now it is no different doing this on the v1s versus v2s v2s versus ones it's exactly the same it's just the fact that there is no two-way transmission involved what you're getting instead on the v2s which is the spectator ones here is the one-way data stream and no ability to recover from data loss regardless of the signal strength now what i'm going to do is let this continue and then we'll come back and take a look at the o3 system Okay, so I've now moved over to testing O3. For this, we're using a set of Goggles 2 as well as the DJI V2s. Now, the Goggles 2 are the master or the main goggle, and that's what you're seeing in the bottom right-hand corner. And then I am flying and using the V2s in spectator mode. Now, as you can see, very quickly into the flight, we begin to see exactly the same behavior. What I will say in my observations is at closer range, Range, the goggles 2 and v2 in 03 mode actually performs a little bit better than the original diy system but the second you get a little bit further out we're not talking dramatic range as you can see here the same thing begins to happen you start getting pretty much the same behavior as you were getting on the original DIY system. Now, just to show you what it does again in this closed off area, you can see that it does break right down. And just to show you that again with the goggles swapped, so now you're seeing the main live view. And as you can see, whilst I get some stutters on the main goggle, on the spectator goggle, I got that complete breakup. However, overall, there is no dramatic difference in the performance between O3 and the original DIY system that I can see with regards to the spectator behavior. The only real difference I can see is that at very close range, the goggles 2 and the V2s with O3 don't break up as much, whereas originally if you remember on the v1 system it was even beginning to break up on the ground it does tend to behave a little bit better but the second you get out a bit exactly the same behavior happens whilst at the field i also did some separation tests between the goggles so me with the goggles v2 walking off the other side of the field compared to the goggles 2 which were masters and i saw no change in the overall behavior i've seen no evidence that the goggles are communicating between each other or at least if they are that having effect on the overall signal behavior in spectator mode
So, in my flight test, what I can say is that there is no dramatic difference in the performance. As I did say several times, it was clear that at very short range, less than say 50 meters, the V1 system broke up, whereas the O3 system didn't. However, the second you get beyond that, it did start to break up. And it wasn't even like a hard 50 meters. There were times that the O3 system would break up close, but Predominantly, I would say that O3 looked better at very, very close range. Now, as for why that is, I don't know. The power level that the O3 system was set to compared to the V1 system may have played into it. Obviously, I let it sort itself out. And the difference in the codex and the overall behavior may have played into it. But what I will say is this, out at range, Beyond, say, 50 meters, there is no distinguishable difference in my tests between the spectator modes, and it doesn't appear that DJI have done anything to really improve this. Now, there has been this question mark or this question raised around if the DJI Goggles 2 in 03 are communicating with the other goggles, which would be the V2s or another set of goggles too, or even the Integras in spectator mode. I think part of this is being driven by the fact that you do have to turn on the mode in the O3 system, the broadcast mode. However, I have done some tests and we'll take a look at them on the Spectrum Analyzer now, and I'm not really seeing anything that would suggest that the goggles are transmitting. However, I do think that option is there to basically say, allow someone to hop in or don't allow someone, rather than like with analog, anyone can hop on, regardless of if they got permission or not, as long as they're on the same channel. Okay, so just to have a look at the goggles on the Spectrum Analyzer, at the moment the O3 ear unit is connected, it is moved out the way and that's why you can see that the video carrier is very, very low down here. These tall carriers you're seeing along here are the goggles telemetry carriers transmitting back from the goggle to the ear unit. Now what we're going to do is turn on broadcasting mode. So if I go into the menu, it's currently off. I'm gonna select on now. That is now turned on, and as you can see, that there is no change. There is no additional carriers appearing. There appears to be no additional transmission from the goggles at all. If I just go into on and then turn it off, you can see literally nothing changes. Now, my belief on what this broadcasting mode is doing is that it is changing the codec because you actually visually see that in the display of the goggles to a a lower quality, something that would be more robust, but also H.264 that will work with the V2 goggles, and it's allowing the data stream to be seen. The thing to understand with the O3 system compared to, say, the other systems is that it is encrypted, and what you're doing is basically saying, hey, yes, other goggles can now see me. There is no need to turn on and off encryption as such, simply because DJI's system is is proprietary there's no other system that would have access to it but what they are turning on and off is the ability for your video stream to be seen by another set of goggles okay so i've just hopped down to 2.4 gigs just to check that there's nothing dramatic being seen here now there is a pulsing carrier that you can see. If I just turn on max hold, you can see these here, that's these tall spikes. These are from the goggles, but they're sort of like a placeholder or a band checking carrier. They're not really fast enough to be carrying great amounts of data. They could be carrying some data, but what they are more than anything is just a polling carrier whilst the system is on five gigs. If we now just turn on broadcasting mode down here, that is now on. You can see, again, nothing has changed. There appears to be no additional output from the goggles at all. And again, as I've just said, it's just changing the stream ID and basically making it visible. Okay, so as you've seen overall, very little has changed. Whilst if you're flying at low range, you might see a bit of benefit with the O3 system with Spectator in normal range, 
nothing's really any different. Now, it isn't terrible with the goggles in spectator mode, but it is challenging, especially if you do what I did, which was fly with the spectator mode goggle. I did that on purpose, so I would have a feeling for how it is. What I will say is the latency is completely all over the place, the image breakup is all over the place, and actually the DVR recording that you've seen at times was much better than what I was seeing on the displays. I was a little surprised when I was putting some of this content together. It was quite a rushed set of flights between the rain here. It's still quite poor here with the weather. I managed to squeeze out one evening as you can see because the sun was quite low and get it sorted. However, I didn't really get the footage I wanted originally but what was interesting was the fact that it did look a little bit better on the DVR compared to what I was seeing in the goggles. Hopefully you never know DJI may make some improvements on this in the future, but here and now, as far as I'm concerned, nothing has changed. It's pretty much exactly the same. Now, that is it from me on this one. If you have found this video interesting, please do let me know what you think in the comment section. Furthermore, if you'd like to support us to allow us to keep buying products like this, the DJI FPV system, the avatar system, to allow me to share info like this with you, please do consider checking out the link to my Patreon or buy me a coffee. It's only through the support of my patrons I'm able to keep making content on this channel, and I want to say a massive thank you from me to all of my patrons. I say this in every video. I would love to read out all of your names, but I can't. But honestly, it really is massively appreciated, and I could not be doing this without your support. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Again, please do let me know what you think in the comments section. Section? 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 Stay safe, and I will speak to you soon.